decided to take a little money and get me an artifact collection off of eBay. I've been eyeballing a few for a while now. Um, you always run a risk of stuff not being real when you do that. And it's always a gamble 100% of the time, no matter what, unless you buy off an authenticator. But it's something lots of people do. And if you know well enough what you're doing or who you're buying off of, then it can be a safe and fun experience. Um, I just wanted to give it a try and see how we fare. There's 12 points in the collection. I paid about $30 after taxes and shipping. So, Dragon says it's gonna be here any minute. We're gonna gotta get a bite to eat. And when we're done, we'll pull them out of the mailbox. We'll see what we got. We'll try to identify each point. And then I'm gonna go get us a little case that we can put them in. And we'll show you the display once we're all done with everything. We're looking around in here. Some of these boxes are a little too deep. You can tell that one's quite a few inches. But we're looking at some of these probably to pick up for that display case. I was hoping to find a little bit cheaper of a Riker case. But I don't think they have them here. Right in here is what I use for arrowheads. So we'll probably grab one of those 8 by 10 inch cases there and use that for this display. Roddy, I got me a new hat to wear at the river. <clears throat> we got some stuff while we were out. We got that case and we're pulling up to the mailbox now. We'll see if our artifacts are in there. Alrighty, Douglas brought this in from the mail. We're gonna cut her open. We're gonna see what we got in here. Now I ordered 12 points. We saw the picture of them. We're gonna get them out, take a look at them, then we're gonna try to figure out uh, just where they belong on the timeline. Now, they are wrapped really well. Each one looks like it's individually wrapped, maybe. There's two or three in the thing I haven't. Yeah, there's probably two or three in each thing. So I have four packages, but I was supposed to have roughly 12 points. Put that off to the side. Still, honestly, pack better than I thought it'd be. This is exciting. Two there. Some of these are little too, so there's gonna be maybe three or four in one of them. All right, there's the little guys. I'll set them all out over here on this one. Look at the little babies. And I have to look up. I'm not sure where in Indiana these were filmed. They might still be Ohio Valley, just lower Ohio Valley than we are. We're what you call mid Ohio Valley. Um, there was three in that one. That one's pretty nice. That one's that real shiny gray flint that I like. I love seeing that stuff in the water get these all laid out on this one piece and we'll get rid of the rest of it all right the last one here and over here that's that case we got the other day we will uh we're expecting these to arrive saturday and something happened where they got uh mailed off to a different area and actually made a little round trip around a couple counties there's a stem. We actually, in our last video, we found a broken uh, base. Very similar stemmed point, so. There's another stem there. So, let's get everything a little bit closer together. 
center up on it here. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Here's our twelve points we ordered. And we will start to take a look at them and try to figure out when and where these were made. Try to make a nice little timeline so we can put them in this bad boy. All right, let me move these off here. They're not very visible. We have these into three groupings now. Um, I like to try to organize things like that. We have just some blades over here or generic tools. I think this one, if you look at the end, might have been used as a drill or a perforator. And this might have been a bigger, who knows what, spear pointer. But it's been broke off and reworked. It's not your traditional triangular like a cobs or it's a bigger point that's been reworked into a triangle. We got our stem there. And then up here we got our notched. I mean, I don't know with these three here, they're a little different. They come out and have a base. They're not your normal stem or notched points, but so it'll take some getting used to looking in a different part of the book i won't be that much further west but i'll be enough that i kind of jump into the section of the highs and more the, the bisecting line of the two regions is west virginia and ohio and i kind of have to look in both parts of the book to uh, figure out what my points are sometimes but these ones here are probably a little bit more all in the same section over to the west since they're all from indiana so i'm looking forward to maybe exploring a different part of the book that i'm used to so we'll get in there and we'll try to get some of this stuff identified all righty i was using overstreet a little bit but i didn't have the best luck with it um it was helpful for the adena points but everything else i pretty much had to bust out projectilepoints.net and then I also left a little comment on the local Ohio Valley forum that I'm on to uh, get some suggestions from people because this case might change if I get a uh, pretty solid suggestion for what somebody might think these are. Um, we got them all done, though. The only one I couldn't place is this one just because it's a broke-off tip. It's been reworked on the bottom, but it was something much bigger. It's hard to tell from the top. If you have a broke base, a lot of times you can tell what you had, but I'm not good at guessing what a broke tip is at all. So I just put type unknown, refashioned into blade. Um, we'll start on the left though. I've got that top one identified as a bottleneck, four to 3,000 BP. And I think this one was in Montgomery, but you can tell up top, they kind of remade it into a perforator or drill. Um, got these two bad boys as Baker's Creek. I had a hard time with this one, but I'm thinking it's a lost lake. There's a few others it might be. Um, Hickory Ridge for this one, but it also was a little bit confusing. These three were pretty easy. These are just different Adena tools, I think. Um, Nero blade, Adena blade, more generic kind of tool, and then uh, Adena Robin stemmed point. Uh, that was the point we first looked at. And in these, I'm not sure. I had a hard time identifying them with anything, but since they're so small, they're just a little bit bigger than your thumbnail. I uh, identified them with the what they look closest to. They got a lot of wear on them. You can see how they're so uneven and stuff. And I don't know, they could have been bigger points at one time, but I have them labeled as apple blossoms. 3,500 to 1,500 BP. So, there is my suggestions of what these points are. And then we will get them into the frame and I will show you the finished result. Alrighty, this is the case completed. Um, I decided to attribute the finds to the man that found them, Randall Jefferson. And it was an eBay auction. It was a pretty reputable seller though. They said that uh, 
this fine old gentleman had found all these points in Montgomery County. So we went ahead and included the information that we have. Um, I might reach out and see if this guy's still around. I don't know if he passed away and is in a state sale or maybe he's just a big time hunter and he's selling off some of his points, but it'd be cool to get to know more about him down the road. But now they're part of our collection. We'll make sure they don't go to waste. We'll uh, keep them in this case and hand them down and hopefully they can be immortalized. People can learn about them for years to come. So that was a pretty fun little project. We always have a good time trying to identify our points, figure out how old they are. Uh, and we're glad to share it with you. We appreciate everybody watching. Have a good one.